What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Acura Auto Garage. The video you're about to watch is a small portion of a larger video. So if you're looking for the full video, check down in the description. In this video, we're going to upgrade our subwoofer and we're going to be looking at factory subwoofer options. Your factory subwoofer is going to look like this. It is rated for 40 watts. It has a final impedance of 2 ohms. And then you can see it has a proprietary mounting pattern and a proprietary connector for when you go to connect a new subwoofer. So those are things you need to keep in mind when you go to replace this sub. All right, so all the subwoofers we are looking at have the same characteristics. They're all eight inches like the factory sub. They all are either two ohm final impedance or can be wired to a two ohm final impedance. They're all gonna fit in our adapter bracket. And while some aren't marketed as free air environment woofers, they all can work in a free air environment. You heard me mention the bracket and this is the bracket I was referring to. So the factory subwoofer has a proprietary mounting mechanism. So it has these ears. This bracket allows you to install an aftermarket subwoofer by mounting the bracket to the vehicle and then the subwoofer to the bracket. Now, this bracket is about a quarter inch thick, a little bit more of a quarter inch. So when you add this and then a subwoofer, you add about an inch of thickness, if not more, depending on the subwoofer to the rear deck height if that makes sense so the distance between the rear deck and where the subwoofer sits has decreased and now they're come closer together and they might rub depending on the subwoofer on the factory sub the surround of the rear deck touches right against the subwoofer to get all the base up and out and that's why you see this ridge right here so that ridge might touch against the top surround of your new subwoofer and either cause it to sound bad or make it so that it rattles so in order to combat that i'm going to show you some solutions at the end if that's what happens to you with your install you can use longer retaining clips or you can trim the surround of the rear deck cover or you could just not use the bracket, drill new holes. It is a weird angle, but you can kind of come up from underneath if you measure them right. So you have a couple different solutions. We find the bracket really makes things easier and we're gonna do our installation with the bracket. All right, YouTube, I'm in Florida. It's hot, it's raining. I'm gonna take advantage of this because it's a little drizzle and it's gonna cool the car down so I can get in there and get the disassembly done. Before I jump into disassembly, let me show you the tools we're gonna need. A 10 millimeter socket, either a long or short, an extension, a ratchet trim removal tool even though you could kind of get away with this so this is to remove clips this is to remove trim but i get one of each just to be safe along with the tools there might be two other things you want to pick up that's going to be these retaining clips these are for your c-pillar so this is what secure the c-pillar to the car when you remove your c-pillar we're going to squeeze these and putting them back to normal is annoying so buying new ones might be easier you can find these on amazon i'll have the link down in the description we also have instructions that show the actual part number and the link to this the item you might want to pick up or take a look at is sound deadening material so this is from ballistic this is their wedge kit this is two 12 by 24 pieces which should be enough to cover my rear deck we'll see and here's what the actual box looks like for the wedge kit I almost forgot, if you're getting sound in you're gonna want a roller as well. This is to help apply the material. I'll show it all to you later, but those are the tools and the optional accessories or other parts you might need. Let's get into the disassembly. I'm gonna give you a quick overview. You're also gonna to wanna to pick up these clips. You can reuse the ones in the car, but it's easier to just use new ones. The link will be down in the description. You can pick them up off Amazon. To remove the rear deck, we're going to have to fold our seat down. We're going to have to release this C-pillar and that C-pillar. And I'll show you, it has a retaining clip we're going to have to collapse. After that, we're going to detach the rear deck from this cover here i'll show you and then we have to remove the third brake light all right so the first thing we want to do is remove this bench seat we have one 10 millimeter bolt back here we're going to need to reach in with our ratchet and we'll be able to then then be able to release these retaining clips underneath the seat to get the bench out the reason why we have to remove the bench is so it gives us access to remove these on either side our 10 millimeter bolt is right down the middle we're going to stick our tool right in here and get it out so we got our 10 millimeter bolt out. Now the seat has a retaining clip that you pull on. So let me get you an angle here. So you pull it back like this and it releases the seat. Sometimes, sometimes the seat won't want to release. So you'll massage this up and down until the clip releases. Now with both clips released, we just want to watch out for the seat belts 
and then we're gonna begin pulling this up and out. So now our seat is out. You just wanna be careful with this. You don't want to scratch up your leather or the interior of your car. This is very lightweight, so one person can easily take it out. Now with our same 10 millimeter, we're going to remove this bolt that's securing this side bolster and the same bolt on the opposite side. So to actually get this thing out, you're just gonna lift up and out. And you're releasing, and you're releasing this hook from right in here. All right, so with our 10 millimeter, we're going to loosen this bolt and take it out. After that bolt is out, after this bolt is out, we're going to take this side bolster and push up. It might take a little bit of force. There we go, but it'll come out. You're releasing this hook from a hole in the metal up here. So now both of them are out. We already pulled off our C-pillars. I'll roll that video. I don't think we needed to remove these, but I'd rather remove it all, show it to you properly on video so I can give you better advice on how to remove it. Because as you could see, that side bolster wasn't really covering much plastic. We could have kind of maneuvered this out of the way, but that's all right. I'm gonna put my seats down now and then we'll continue with the disassembly. Is releasing our seats. Then we can fold them down. Then we can fold the other side down. And now we have a better look at what we need to remove. So this right here is two separate pieces. We're going to unclip them from each other, but we're first gonna remove our C-pillars. To remove our C-pillar, we're first going to remove the weather stripping, and then we're gonna try to get this to peek out a little so that you can see the clip. That right there is what's holding. We're going to have to collapse that clip, and I'll show you in a second. If this is your first time ever doing something like this to your car, I recommend disconnecting the battery and leaving it disconnected for the duration of this installation. What is behind those C-pillars are your airbags. So when we go to collapse this clip, if you hit it in the wrong spot, you might trigger an airbag. And that's the last thing I want to happen to you is you're trying to upgrade your subwoofer, you blew an airbag, and now your little weekend project turned into a nightmare because you have to replace that airbag. So disconnect the battery, leave it disconnected for the duration of the video. In our case, I'm not going to disconnect it so I know exactly where the clip is and how to hit it to get it to release without having to pull power. To get this seat pillar out, you are going to smash this area very hard. You use a mallet, you just want to make sure it's clean. This is a weighted mallet, so it'll have some force to it. And that should have taken care of it. Yep, my clip has released. You can see my mallet wasn't that clean, so make sure yours is because I left the mark. Now with that clip collapsed, it'll just pull out just like this. Remember, I couldn't get this one before. And now you have other clips that just need to come out. Oh, sorry. You need to use that much force, but that's really all that holds this on. So I'm gonna clean this up and then I'll show you the clip. So here is the clip we collapsed and this one's metal, but you can get away with a plastic one. Let me just get it out of here. Hit this not one. Come. There we go. So here's the clip we just collapsed and you can see it is metal and like this one that is plastic, but they will work the same when you replace them. And this, once the clip has collapsed, there's no way to take them apart. And that's why these need to be replaced. But we'll show you a little trick. If you heat these up, you can pry them apart and reset them to this position. So I have released it past this little first ridge right here. That's probably gonna be the hardest. Now I'm gonna continue coming up. I'm just gonna flex these back and gonna wanna use a little bit of heat. And there you go, my clip is as good as new. This will still hold, this will still collapse the way it needs to. And if what happened to you, what, if what just happened to me happens to you, you're just gonna apply pressure from the back and flip these back down. That's how you can reuse these if you want to. I don't recommend it, but if you're ever in a tight spot where you need to just put it back momentarily, this will get you there. All right, so that cover is completely off and you can see the AM, FM antenna lines right there. So now we're gonna do the same to this side. We're gonna take our mallet, we're gonna whack right here. Just one hit should be enough. So that should have collapsed the clip. Now we can pull our weather stripping back and pull this. Now we can pull this out. Oh, come on. Okay, now we can release those clips and then pull this up and out. All right, for the rest of this disassembly, you're gonna have to get in there. So make sure you bring all your tools and everything you're gonna need and maybe a towel to wipe your sweat because it's gonna be hot in there. 
but let me jump in. You see, I put my bench back. I'm leaning my seats against there. I'm actually just gonna lean in. So like here, I'll let you see me. I know I look crazy, but I'm leaning in so I have more versatility. And this is the first panel that needs to come off. So it's two panels. One is like furry carpet and the other one's plastic. So we're going to get this out first. We're just gonna start here with our seatbelts. So we'll snake our seat belts through. This is the seat belt that they call for removal because there is no slit for it. So I'll show it to you in a second. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this seat belt through. Our middle seat belt doesn't have a slit. So we're actually gonna unbolt it from the car. I'll show you that next. All right, so something I did off camera is I removed this, but I think I already showed that to you. Now you're gonna take your trim panel tool. And you're actually gonna come from the back forward. So right there, you need to be able to get underneath to pry this panel away from that one because this is clipped into this one. So we're just gonna use our trim panel tool, try to get it started and slid under there. There we go. And then we're going to start prying up. You should hear clips release. There we go. So with that trim panel piece, I was able to release this. And now you'll see I do have some of it touching there and over there but it has enough flex where it'll come loose so you just want to be careful and now now this panel is loose enough where i can maneuver it out of my way and continue with the rear deck now something we don't want to forget before we start prying up at that is to disconnect our third brake light and to disconnect it you're just going to twist it so it's just a little bit tricky but it just needs to twist off all right, so to get this out, you just spin it and pull back. It is hard to get out. It was kind of stuck for me. I had to use a pair of pliers to twist it. You want to make sure you disconnect that third brake light. Then you can begin popping the panel up and then pulling it back. It's going to be a super tight fit, but you'll be able to get it out like this. Okay, now here's the panel. Here's the surround we might have to deal with later. Um, we'll see how it goes. But now that we got this out, we can remove the four bolts that hold our subwoofer. All right, guys, to get our subwoofer out, it's just four 10 millimeter bolts and we're just going to remove them all. With our last bolt off, we can then remove the subwoofer. It has a gasket on it, so sometimes it likes to get stuck to the metal. So you can take your same pry tool, stick it into one of the edges and just raise it up like that. Then we just have to deal with the Honda connector. You're just gonna squeeze the sides and pull it down just like that. Now with the subwoofer disconnected and unmounted, we can just easily remove it. All right, before you continue with anything, you wanna grab your retaining clip removal tool and grab all the retaining clips that got stuck. You can look at the panels and see where they're missing. You can also just look at the rear deck and you'll see clips there that should be on your panels. So you wanna grab all of those, put them where they belong before you move on. It's time to apply our sound ending material. Here are our two sheets. So what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to peel it away from this paper. You're going to stick it on the metal. Then you're gonna take your box cutter and you're just gonna score it like that. And then this way. And then after you score it, you just pull it away. You're gonna apply it to the metal and then with your roller, you're going to roll it down. You really need to do this with force so that it sticks really well because over time this will try to come off and the more you roll it, the better it'll stick on. So I'm going to do the rear deck. I'm not gonna show you all of it. I just want to show you how it's applied and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so so far I used one of my sheets and at the top, I don't really have much going on. Underneath is where I'm taking care of most of my sound deadening and I'm gonna keep covering this area with material as needed, but this is gonna be a good starting point for me. When it comes to sound deadening, you wanna make sure you pick good thick stuff. You don't want little thin stuff. It's not really gonna kill rattle. You're gonna have to use more of it. And then it's up to you. It's up to your discretion. People are always gonna try to convince you you need to cover the whole panel. 
but to actually kill vibrations you only need to cover the important parts so just use it with your own discretion and stay away from really thin cheap stuff your kicker comp c subwoofer package comes with the subwoofer the mounting bracket the foam and the screws all in the box it also comes wired so you don't have to do any wiring so if you're looking for the harness it's underneath the subwoofer so your subwoofer is going to be already pre-wired the terminals are going to be jumped together to give you a two ohm final impedance this is a dual four ohm subwoofer now what we're going to do is we're going to take our mounting bracket we're going to slide it underneath and bring it up and then we're going to line up our screw holes so when you go to mount your subwoofer onto your mounting bracket you want to make sure that you have it in this orientation this right here has a flat line all of the other ones are round and this ear is bigger than all the other ears and this is how it's going to install in the car so you want to make sure you line it up that way your subwoofer for the easiest install you want to make sure that the kicker logo is straight and far away from you and this orientation the screw holes and the screws will line up no problem when securing the mounting bracket to the subwoofer you want to make sure you use hand tools so you're not stripping the plastic as you're tightening and you'll see that once you get to the very bottom it's going to continue to twist but that screw is in there you can move on to the next one i do want to show you that even though this is thin plastic it is mounted in there very firmly and that this will hold very well so you can see i just did damage to the actual woofer and the bracket before any screws released and i'll go right near a screw and you can see again i'm doing damage to the bracket and my woofer and my screw is not releasing from its location so it's nice and sturdy it's gonna hold so i wanted to show you that it's really gonna hold you can see i did damage here before i installed it in the car though i do want to add my foam gasket your foam you're just gonna wrap around the bottom of the woofer so you can start right here you're going along this edge and you're just going fully around the entire woofer you want to make sure you press down firmly you want to make sure you press down firmly when you're applying this so it doesn't come off and this is going to put a nice seal between the bracket and the metal deck of the car also this is going to help with some rattles so you want to make sure you do apply this foam if you find yourself in this situation where you have leftover foam all you have to do is take a box cutter our box cutter will line up where it's ending so it's ending right there cut a little slit pull it and then we'll just bring it together to make it full so now our subwoofer is secured to our bracket our bracket has the foam and all the mounting screws and we're ready to add it to the car so when we go to install our subwoofer we're just going to drop it in place we're going to make sure that our biggest tab with the line here is on this corner and then we'll line up the rest of our screw holes we're going to start we're going to start by putting in this screw it's easiest to lift up so you can see where the hole is and let it drop in the hole and then just start hand tightening it then you're going to move to the opposite corner in the back we're going to line up our back corner and the subwoofer does have some give in the way that it moves so that you can easily line it up so you're just going to do the same thing you're going to lift up a little see where the hole is line it up and then start it by hand so now that one's in now we're going to move on to this one this one's in again you always want to start hand tightening so that you don't cross thread anything and now this one is in so after i've tightened them all a little bit now i'm going to fully secure each one you want to be careful you don't want to over tighten because this is plastic on metal so you can crush it once you start to get some serious resistance like i am now is when you want to stop now with our subwoofer mounted we're just going to connect our harnesses we're just gonna clip right in place and we're good to go. subwoofer all mounted screwed in our wiring is done this is the 48 cwr 4 this we also sell on our website you can get a complete subwoofer upgrade package just like this
Hi YouTube, so we finished testing all our subwoofers. Now we need to prep our rear deck so we can put it back into the car and secure everything in place. As you can see, I still have the rear deck off. I'm gonna apply some sound treatment to the rear deck cover and then we'll get it mounted into place. Not even gonna risk it. We're just gonna cut this down. If you need to get this grill off, you can drill out these plastic welds and then the actual grill, this piece right here will come fully off. This is easier with a flush cutter, but if all you have is a box cutter, then this is what we'll use. You're going to make sure this is sharp, and then you're just going to cut into it like this. Turn the chicken angle. Okay, so you see my first cut. So now I'm gonna come at an angle and cut that piece off, come at another angle until you can get the blade flush and now you'll just start cutting around like this this is going to take a little bit with this but you'll get it done all right if you have an oscillating tool it's way faster it'll give you a, a cleaner edge that's what we used here but you could see that thing is entirely gone it'll make putting this back on a lot easier so before we put this back we do want to add our own sound deadening material so that's what you could see here this padding is to reduce the rattle i'm going to add some of the ballistic material right around where the subwoofer goes and on these edges my brake light is missing right now and that's because i do want to put sound deadening right around it and it'd be easier with it out of the way and my covers are also off right now but those won't really matter i just want to make sure i get all my sound deadening right i have all my clips back and i prep this piece really good before i put it back in the car here's what i have so far now i'm going to apply some of this foam padding just here on the end because it had some from the factory so here's my final product has sound deadening material right here and then some foam and below it some more sound deadening material i might add some here or some to the plastic in the car we'll check that out next I'm put my actual light back in put the light back in you're lining up this and this and then you're going to tilt forward first um, uh, there you go so tilt forward first and then tilt back and now it's locked in place all right, so this is probably gonna be the hardest part of the entire install. You wanna make sure that these white clips back here on this side and the opposite side haven't fallen off. You wanna make sure you have all your retaining clips out so that you don't have to go get them later. To actually get our rear deck back on, we're gonna slide one corner in first and then we're gonna come up and over and slide our other corner. You see how we're clearing our subwoofer with no issue. You wanna watch your speakers. So this little right here, this little retaining clip is gonna to wanna to scratch your speaker on each side. So you wanna watch those. And then you wanna watch that you don't get jammed. So right here, I'm jammed a little bit. So I'm gonna come forward and I'm gonna start sliding over. And here's where you wanna be super careful with your light. That light will break. It will be annoying to replace. So you wanna be super careful. I can't film and do this, so I'm gonna throw you over here I'm gonna let you watch me and I'll show you how I maneuver it around so this wasn't out make sure yours is so now we'll bend and push back just don't want to get jammed up so we'll come over here a little bit again keep bending pushing back bending pushing back and it's just clearing our light you're just gonna massage it a little there there we go all right so just like that we're over the rear deck just be super careful with that light i broke it last time i didn't this time what actually broke it wasn't putting it in was taking it out we're not leaving our kicker sub in here we're going to put a different sub in here so i'm going to have to pull this back out but i'm first going to show you how to secure everything before i do that we got our rear deck on what you want to be careful of is that the clips we're going to touch right here. So check your speakers that you didn't rip them, putting this back on. And then we can really slide it into place. And you'll see that all our clip holes start to line up. And then we can begin clipping it in. Now this clip right here might give you some issue. So you're just going to have to use a little bit of force to get it down. And now right around our sub there are no clips so in here and here are two retaining clips that aren't going to hold 
so mine aren't in. I'm going to show you the secret with the longer retaining clip I was talking about earlier in the video. So normally these are used for your C-pillars, but you can use them on the rear deck to add space between the rear deck and the rear deck cover. Let me show you how. So with the same clip as the C-pillar clips, let me show you right there. That same clip on here, I'm going to put one here where one's missing. That's going to add enough of a height to install our subwoofer and allow the surround to not touch the top of the woofer. That white clip in there, so straight down, and then on this on this side, straight down. So right there, both clips are in. My rear deck is now nice and sturdy. You can see this isn't touching, but that's what we need because we need that extra space. For now we're gonna clip this piece back on. Remember, this has clips, has clips that clip right onto there. So we're gonna get those lined up first. This seatbelt. Slide this one through. All right, so now I just wanna make sure all our clips are in here. We can see we still have some looseness. So you just wanna make sure all those clips are in. All right, so now we got this piece back in. Now we want to do our C-pillars. I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like with this together. Remember, I did a lot of sound then, and you need to make sure you do that too, so you minimize the rattle. You want to make sure you have all your clips in place before you attempt to put this back, otherwise you're going to have a poor time with insulation. So I'm going to show you how this one goes on first. I'm going to try to do it without getting in the way. But first you want to come in, you want to slide the bottom in, so the bottom hooks onto both sides. Then you want to come to the top, and you want to start clipping in your clips. Then here the big one, it's going to be hard, I'm going to try to get it on camera. You're going to want to sneak it into its spot. Hold on, let me open this door. So we want this out of the way, and then you want to line it up with its hole. There we go and then just collapse like that. And now it's in there tight, it won't come out, and you're good, you can now put this back. So, oh, hold on, I have one clip here have, that hasn't gone in. This up. There we go, so now that clip is in. This is nice and tight, and you can see it's nice and sealed. The opposite side, same thing, you're gonna slide the bottom in first so how the hell does this thing go this thing goes like this so this this and this need to line up with the bottom so get those in first then you can hook in then you want to get your clips in so there we go then you want to get your big hook clip in so the big clip is in now and now i want to get this lower bottom clip there we go. So now it's back and then I'm going to add my weather stripping right where it was. With both my seat pillars back, I'm now going to add the seats back. I will tell you, you want to have clean hands when doing this. I'm bloody and stuff and dirty. So this side's dirty. This side's a little dirty. I'm going to clean them up, but just don't do that. Don't put yourself in that situation where you have to clean them. It's real annoying to clean these and you don't want to stain them. I'm gonna put this side bolster back, this side bolster back. We'll wrap everything up. Our seats are all back. It doesn't even look like we ever took them out. Our subwoofer is in there. Something you don't wanna to forget to do is to put your light bulb for your dirt brake light back. So you're just gonna plug it in and screw it in place. Subwoofer choice is gonna be up to you. We have the kicker subwoofer package. We have the bracket. It fits multiple subwoofers now. Before that was a limitation. The new bracket's coming out soon. We're doing the video on the radio. We're doing the speaker radio. There's still a lot to come for your TSX, so make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to think if there's any pointers I can give you. With the rear deck, just be careful with that rear light. If you do break it, you can buy a new one. Uh, you're gonna scratch up your hands. Just be prepared for that. It's hot. It's gonna take some time, I wanna say two hours three hours if you're doing it yourself you could probably i could if i was rushing that job like let's say you came to my shop and i had to rush through it for whatever reason i think you can get through it in an hour and a half maybe an hour if you've never done this before i suggest three hours if you're looking to get this done at a shop they're good, probably going to bill you for three hours so whatever three hours of the time is usually 125 150 sometimes 100 bucks so keep that in mind you might spend 300 plus 120 on the subway first so like 400 dollars all together it's up to you if you do it yourself you can follow the guide, show you how to do it. If you have a different Acura, ILX, TLX, TL, RLX, they're all extremely similar. 
the link in the description or the link in this video has the instructions on how to get it out it's not a video but it has written instructions each step by step with diagrams on how to get stuff out but all right guys that's going to wrap up the video if you have any questions leave them down in the comments as always give the video a like and if you are interested in more content for your accurate tsx make sure you subscribe we have a lot more planned